Hey, do you feel like there's something missing from your life? Or maybe you have a burning desire inside of you to go and do more and achieve more and make a bigger impact. Or maybe you have a really big vision or really big dream for yourself or your future, and you just don't know how to go and achieve them. Well, if that's you, then this conversation is just so tailored for you. Our guest tonight, she's absolutely amazing. She actually shares some really amazing strategies on how you can go ahead and chase your dreams and achieve your big visions and basically change adversity into a positive outcome. And if you're stuck and if you're feeling stagnant, if you're feeling frustrated, like a lot of the times we do when we're not getting the answers, when we're not getting the solutions to our problems, then you really, really like this conversation. So with that, let's jump into it. Hello, hustlers. Welcome back to the show. I'm Talal, your host, and as always, I have a fantastic show for you today. Tonight's guest is a speaker. She's a transformational coach. She's a business coach. She's even a life coach. She is a spiritual mentor. Um, She has lots of experience in uh, marketing. She has just an awesome story and a phenomenal mission. Her mission in life is to spread love, positivity, and compassion in the world. Um, and just before we started talking, we uh, sorry, before we started recording, we, we were talking and she told me about her story. And her story is really powerful. I think there's a lot that we can learn from this. So with that, let's jump straight into this interview. Barbara, thank you so much for being here. Uh, really really honored to have you on yes well the pleasure is uh, mine <laughs> awesome so guys barbara uh, her, her full name is barbara vercruz um she is from belgium um, and uh, you know i'm i'm really honored to to have her on the show simply because we got connected through a mutual friend and uh she she has a amazing backstory so uh, barbara why don't we start there tell us a little bit about uh, your journey that led you to um to to the stage you know you're, you're doing so many amazing things you had a construction business you are a life coach a business coach a speaker a transformation coach so how did you how did you become this amazing person well um i can say hardships made me who i am now and challenges um I strongly believe that without challenges and hardships, uh, we cannot reveal our power. Impossible. Um, If we would have immediate success, we would be a weak, successful person. And with the first challenge, we would go down flat on the floor. I think that is maybe we are like a rough diamond and every hardship is polishing us to make us shine and to make us who we are. And, you know, I I overcame many, many things. You could say the biggest challenge was that 16 years ago, I was diagnosed with a stage four cancer. Um, My youngest child, I'm happily married, three children. The youngest was eight weeks old at that moment. And I was told April 7th, 2003, I was told that I would not survive the end of the year, that I could start saying goodbyes, that I would bet my business. So, you know, like the first night in hospital, I was lying there and I was at the time still being my youngest and he had to be taken away. So I was in the hospital the first time without having my children close to me because they were still. And I started crying and you know, and then I was like, okay, Barbara, stop it, stop it. You know, like they are still very little children and where they are right now, they are surrounded by love. They are with their grandparents who love them dearly. So you crying here in your bed because you miss your kids will not help you. And I really made a mind shift and I was thinking, okay, I have anything now that can help me. 
Every thought that I have has to uplift me. Every, you know, like, that is what I can do. The rest the doctors have to do. But what can I do? That is keep my spirit high. And I had this deep faith that I would survive. You could say, I don't, I, until this day, I do not know where it comes from. You could say, I have always been a spiritual person, deeply connected, um, praying, meditating. That was who I was. Um, and I had this deep faith. But at the same time, I was 32. I was laying in that hospital bed. And I was thinking, if, if I would die right now, is the life that I'm looking back at, the legacy that I'm leaving, is that what I wanted to leave legacy? And the answer was no, big ex exclamation marks, no. I had led until then the life that you could say the regular part, going to school, college, starting a business, marrying. But I still had a dream within me that I had kind of gently buried because it was unusual, because it seemed impossible, because, you know, like, it, it, it just didn't make any sense. But I made a promise to myself. I made a promise that if I would survive the cancer, I would take my second life. It would be a second life, a, a second chance in life. I would take that chance, you know, like with both hands and never again, you know, like bury a dream, bury a dream. My dream, my mission, had always been, you know, like in every encounter with someone, I love to make them feel worthy, acknowledged, loved. Um, even in business, you know, like listening. I, th I think in business, it's the number one thing. Listen, you know, it's not about you. It's about your customer. Always. It's always about the other person. So my mission was to bring more love, kindness, and compassion into the world. Because the world world needs that, that desperate but wow that's you know like what kind of dream is that you're not mother teresa no i'm not mother teresa and yet i wanted to impact millions of lives in a positive way empower people to let them know that they don't have to be a victim in their life or that they are no not powerless we co-create our lives and we have the power to make, you know, like, to, to chase our dreams, to fulfill our, our dreams. So, so, you know, I, after, you know, I had many surgeries, a year of chemotherapy, and um, I started, I still had my construction business, but I started kind of reading lots of self-improvement books, spiritual books, really to, you know, like, I started vacation, um, and but still, you know, like playing a, a same in still keeping my construction business. You know, like I, I was like divided. I, I had already personal coaching clients, but still had my construction business. And then two years ago in 2016, my construction business, we had a huge setback, something that happened um, and I almost went bankrupt. And you could say, wow, um, wow, that's a challenge. For me, you know, like it was a sign, you know, like from the universe, like Barbara, you have to change direction now, you know, like do not postpone it anymore. So at 46 years old, I had to reinvent myself. I was there with a company, you know, like who was in big trouble. I had an enormous financial loss. So I had really to, you know, like stay positive and keep on moving to make, you know, like to make a, a, a complete turnaround. So I, um, I had my personal coaching clients and, you know, like I had an opportunity at BMW to start doing some coaching, to do quality management, to start simplifying processes. Um, and until this day, BMW is one of my biggest clients. But I had, you know, like... The opportunity was there. It was not entirely that 
what I was looking at that moment. But sometimes, you know, like we have to take with both hands, even if it's not exactly as you imagine, you know, like the universe provides and you just take the opportunity and you move on. And it has taught me so many things, you know, like the striving for excellence, like BMW being a very premium, high class, you know, like customer, you know, like working on the customer centricity, customer uh, experience. Um, and I started for my coaching, you know, like, at this, like two years ago to a Facebook page. It's called Barbara Vercruz, Start the Life of Your Dreams. And one of my mentors, because I strongly believe, is if people want to become really, you have big dreams. And you really want to, um, you could say, rise above your circumstances, rise above the normal people around you. You need coaches, you need mentors, you need accountability partners. This will lift you above the average. So one of my mentors told me, Barbara, you should start doing video. So two and a half years ago, I think it was, I started doing live videos with teaching life lessons and having, you know, like building a very strong connection with my audience. And until now, I have already, I think, almost 2 million views on all the lives together. So you could say my dream yeah. of touching millions of people mm. has already become true. And I reach people all over the world. But mm. you know, the most beautiful thing, Talal, about this era we live in, I reach people as well in the States, as in Uganda, as in India, as in Russia, as in Belgium. I reach people who feel, who have courage. Every, you know, I, I get messages every day of people, they say, you know, like, I didn't give up because of you. I moved on because I saw your video. And, well, there is no bigger joy for me in life. I can say that. It's just like empowering people, feeling, you know, like giving them the feeling that they are worthy, that they are gifted, and that the world needs them. And always, you know, like, leading by example and, and teaching people. Um, I, I, I have videos entirely on how to be kind to rude people, how to be kind to an unkind person, stay out of their, you know, like in bringing that, in bringing, you could say a powerful kindness, you know, like not a kindness that is weak and you are, you know, like afraid of the aggressive. No, you are calm, you are centered and you are so much powerful than the one who is like aggressive, who is run by his emotions, who does know what he's saying, you are calm and centered, you know, like, and bringing that into the world that it is not the bully, it is not, you know, like, the, 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 what we are taught, like survival of the, you know, like the strongest, the fittest. No, you can be as powerful in, you know, like in being a compassionate person. I think that's even more powerful. Mm. And we, you know, like going to a world where we lift each other, we support each other, you know, like, and in supporting someone, you, you rise and not in having that competition and having to put someone down for you to, to get up. No, doing the inverse, like support each other. Like you, you support me, I support you. And in, in going to that model, you could say, into the world, we are, sh you know, like, you are doing it, me, every day, in, in, in every encounter you have with a human being, we are changing the world. And we can mm. thank social media for it. And I know many people curse social media or curse TV. It's always how you use it. True. Very, very true. And, and such a powerful story and such a powerful message you have there. Thank you so much for sharing that, Barbara. Uh, really appreciate it. But you, you seem to have a pattern, which is that whenever you have faced adversity in your life, you have somehow managed to turn things around. And I'm actually thinking, uh, you know, what, what, what the audience might be thinking right now, if they're watching this. Um, 
And it's how, how do you actually go about doing that? Because for a lot of people, they feel stuck in life. They feel their life is stagnant. Yes. They feel frustrated because they're looking for the answers. They're looking for the solution to the problems, but the answers and the solutions are just not showing up. And at that point, you start to feel helpless. And I think that's the worst feeling of all, where you just start to almost give up and you feel helpless. So you almost have this pattern, like you, you had a stage four cancer at the age of 32. You had a, a newborn at that time that you had, you know, uh, two older kids and somehow you managed to turn things around. You then went through bankruptcy with your construction business. And again, you focused on yourself, you reinvented yourself and you actually ended up working with BMW, which is, you know, phenomenal. And now you're reaching millions of people all over the world. So what, what is it, Barbara, what does it take to face adversity, stare it in the eye and still come on top? Okay. Um, first thing is be honest with yourself. If you are full of excuses, if you are blaming your circumstances, then you have to look again. Then you are making yourself powerless. Mm. If you are in an environment where you have lots of negative people around you, Distance yourself. I think that's one of the most, most important. Surround yourself with people who support you, who believe in your dream. I leave, I had to, to leave behind many people, especially when you're, you know, like when you're in financial trouble, lots of people stay away anyway. Anyway, they stay away. Oh, you know, like we don't go there. Um, they they cannot face it because they their fear you know like and being su surrounded with people who support you um who believe in your dream is you or you go in you know you have facebook communities or you have people you know like the people who 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 are really always there to lift you up first of all you know like acknowledge them be grateful be grateful for those people they are pearls in your life um and then i would say first of all whole day vision what i have what i read every day i have my ideal life scenario I wrote out on two pages how I want every day to look like. I'm Barbara and I love my life. And I read it. So you have to believe before you see. Mm. Many people do it the other way around. They want to see first. Yeah. But all they vibrate is fear, frustration. Do you want to work with someone who is frustrated and negative? I don't think so. Mm. So you have to really, even if you feel like your world is, is, is going down and, the, you know, like the ceiling is coming, you really have to stay focused. And I cried, you know, like I'm a woman, I'm a, 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 a man gets frustrated, a woman, a, a woman more, you know, like gets cry. I, tears. I had tears and it was always because I could see within myself a certain thing that brought me in a certain situation. And I knew that if I could overcome that, that, that you could say weakness or that thing within myself, if I could overcome that, learn from it, if I was willing to admit like, oh my God, you know, like there, I have to change that, that pattern within my behavior. Mm. If you have that courage to know that you, you know, like, that you sometimes you, it's sometimes your upbringing, it's your environment that, that gives you beliefs to, to behave in a certain way, but they are not always helpful. So if you can see within yourself what isn't helping you, then you have to be, you know, like no excuses. Mm. And you have to have the courage, even if it hurts and even if it makes you sad, even if you are disillusioned, um, just move on, just move on on you know like deal with it move on and it makes you so much you know like more powerful that's you know like second thing. positive people around you deal you know like be honest with yourself and then i would say you know like immerse yourself with knowledge immerse yourself read books watch videos you know like 
immersed, you know, like I rarely go to, you know, like to parties. I do not watch the news. I do not, you know, like let's enter my mind with distractions, negativity, you know, like I'm very, fo I have very few spare time. I work a lot. I study. I'm in the process of writing a book. I have three kids, a household. So you can imagine that from six, sometimes 5 a.m. in the morning until 11 p.m., I have a, a schedule. So be disciplined and immerse yourself with I would say excellence, you know, like the best books, the best mentors, so many good things are available for free. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You're so right. And, and I think that's fantastic advice there. Something actually that brings me to my, conversa my conversation with a friend of mine last night, actually. Um, and we were, we were kind of messaging back and forth. And one of the things we were talking about was changing your internal environment. Like regardless of all the negativity that that's going on around you, it's so important to change your internal environment and focus on making sure that your internal environment is positive. And you talked about, you know, immersing yourself, immersing yourself with positivity, immersing yourself with books and podcasts and lectures and talks, you know, and YouTube videos. There's so much yes. free stuff like on social media, you, you just talked about it. So people can go and immerse themselves in that. Um, and also, you know, I mean, I, I'm going to ask the audience the question here. I mean, how many times on the show have we talked about the quote, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with, right? And, and Barbara, again, is, is talked about it. Like, are you surrounding yourself with negative people or are you surrounding yourself with people who uplift you, who drive you, who motivate you, yeah. who help you, who support you, who actually believe in your vision and your dreams? I mean, that's mm -hmm. the question. Those are the hard questions that we need to be asking ourselves. So, you know, who are the five people? Who are the five people in your life? I, I, I actually, you know, I want you to think about it. Seriously, think about it. I actually made a list when I first time heard that quote. So, yeah, I mean, I think that's phenomenal advice, Barbara. But you, you mentioned two things there. You talked about, you know, being focused and you also talked about having the courage. Now, when I look at yes. myself and yes, you know, I, I can be focused um, and I can, I can generate the courage to, you know, change uh, uh, an, an, an adversity or a negative situation into a positive one. However, for me, it usually takes a, a fair bit of time. Like I struggle with that. And I'm guessing actually a lot of the people in the audience as well, they, they will struggle with that. So what can we do to make sure that we do develop the focus and the courage in order to change change a change in the moment or or maybe you know uh, shorten shorten that transition process where we are still stuck we still feel stuck we're still feeling stagnant but we we are consciously wanting to move forward i i maybe <laughs> you will not like to hear this but patience 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 it's there's a, the patience it's such a virtue and i will you know like many times go out of your mind because your mind is is you know like that's that voice full of self-doubt that's that voice that is self-loathing you go you know like and go in your heart you know like you have to you know whether if you prefer praying, if you prefer meditating, the biggest moments of inspiration come when your mind is quiet and you open yourself for something so much bigger than you. Then, you, you know, like sometimes me, my best moments, I'm driving the car, you know, like sometimes it's like a download of inspiration. I'm like, oh my God, I have to stop and start, you know, like always have a notebook with you, have a, a phone that you can, you know, like dictate or, or um, but just don't over worry, don't overthink. The more you overthink, the more you block yourself and you get stuck. Mm. It's just, you know, like let it go let it go have the big vision but you know like uh let go of the uh, you know like the obsession about having quick results you have to let it go and be in the flow because on a, a you know you could say vibrational level if you worry too much and you overthink you are putting all blocks 
in front of you energetically to really, you know, like attract the right opportunities and you radiate what you radiate, you attract. And it's, it's very practical, you know, like if I would go to, you know, like, I don't know, um, let's say now BMW and I come there and I seem tense and I want to jump up and I want and all I radiate is scarcity neediness they will not work with me if I radiate passion drive you know like fire that's you know motivation wow people want to work with me mm. but you have to embody and that's the work and that's the hard work it's really embodying what you want to achieve you first have to believe you can I will say something very important we cannot outperform the vision we hold of ourselves mm. so if you only have a small vision of yourself a small dream you will never you know like your mind will never see the opportunities that your mind will never you know like the possibilities so the bigger your vision your mind will you know like look everywhere to to just do the inspiration will come because you have the big dream mm. right so people in the audience that was a writer downer i don't know if you caught that but barbara said you cannot outperform your vision you cannot perform your vision of yourself so what yes. is i ask you the question right now what is your vision of yourself that's a deep question, actually. I, I, I think I, I would actually have to sit down and even think about it. That, that's a very deep question, Barbara. Thank you for giving us some homework. I wasn't expecting any homework, but yeah, thank you for the homework. <laughs> no, I see myself already signing my book. I, I, I'm still writing. I'm seeing mm. signing myself. You know, like I see, you know, like the queue already, people waiting to get my book signed. I see my book with post-its of people who have underlined and even, you know, like copies who have been read so many times. I even had tears of joy that I see that I see in my mind people, you know, like their lives transformed by my book. I see myself up on, on a stage talking to thousands of people, you know, like even if it hasn't happened yet, I see it mm. and I know. I know from a very profound level, it will happen. Just as I knew two years ago, you know, like I want to touch millions of people's lives and many people, you know, like in my village in Belgium, they were like, oh my God, you know, like, what does she think? Who does she, th who does she think she is? So those people, it's, you know, like, it's not that you have to fight those people. You don't have to look down on, just take gently, they distance mm. and if they want to stay in their small world in their small that's okay if fear keeps them in that place that's okay all you can do is teach by leading you know like by being an example yeah yeah very true and for people in the audience again i i i will encourage you to implore what is your vision is it as big as barbara's i mean barbara just told us about her vision of signing her book and inspiring millions of people on a stage how about you what's your vision is it as big as barbara's because if your vision is not big and if your vision is something that will once you've achieved it there is no next level to it then how will you ever continue on your journey to personal growth and your self growth and um, on your journey to help others so yes. yeah, I, th I think that's a big one, Barbara. That's a really big one. And I think most people struggle with that because, you know, you're right. It's so hard to, to believe in something when it's not in front of you. Um, and you alluded yes. to that earlier as well. But it's uh, like you said, it is so important to do that. And what I also actually heard you say earlier was the fact that in order to develop that focus, in order to develop that courage where you can actually you know, change a negative situation or, you know, some adversity into a positive um, or to actually go ahead and chase your dreams, it takes patience and it takes practice, right? It's not something that's going to be able to, you, you'll be able to, you know, do straight away. It's something that takes patience and over time with effort, you can develop those, those traits and those skills. 
Yes. And really, I would encourage people to, you know, like connect with, with your heart and, you know, like have some spiritual practice. Right. You know, like there is the mind side and the mm -hmm. effort side. Yeah. But there is also the letting go side and, um, you know, like, like surrendering to something bigger than yourself. Mm. So would you, would you suggest that meditation or uh, mindfulness are, are good ways of doing that? Or are there any other strategies that you can share with yes. us as well? Because I personally, oh. I, I meditate on a regular basis. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I think it depends a lot of people's um, cultural background. Mm. I meditate and I, I pray. I even, you know, like the most important words in the universe, you could say are, are the I am, I am. And the words that follow that, you start to embody. So if I say, I am wisdom, I am love, I am compassion, you know, like slowly a mantra. You, it's as if, you know, like in saying it, having affirmations every day, your mind starts to believe, you know, like even in, in the beginning, you are saying things and, and there's a part of you who doesn't believe it. That's okay. Just give yourself some time. If I first read my ideal life scenario, I was like, oh my God, you know, like touching p millions of people's hearts. And I was back in my little office in my construction business. I was like, oh my God, you know, like, but in doing it every day, every day and not, um, we are not the first ones, you know, like um, I'm reading now, I'm, I'm reading lots of biographies. I love to read about people, you know, who became very successful. Um, I'm reading Andrew Carnegie now. He's, um, he was one of the most wealthy Americans ever. Um, and seeing how their mindset is, how they you know, like, and they all have the same thing. They believed before they saw it in reality. Mm, yeah, yeah. And, and, and you're absolutely right. I mean, this, this is the Sort, sort of like um, a, a recurring theme in, in the lives of all these uh, people who, who you can consider to be super achievers. I mean, they achieved way beyond normal expectations. And they had this thing where they, are, you know, they talk about visualizing, emotionalizing, and internalizing. Right, there's two, three yes. steps to this. Yes. So you visualize, yes. you emotionalize, yes. and you internalize. What is it that you're trying to achieve? Your aim, your goal, your vision, your dream, whatever it is you're trying to pursue. Um, and then you you take inspired action. You go ahead and you act on it. And you don't really need to have figured out, you know, the whole whole process, the the whole journey. But you need to just start taking action. Um, and then over time, you figure it out. So Barbara, um, what, what are your thoughts on achieving holistic success? By this, I mean having success in every area of your life. Like for example, you have a successful business. You have been married for 20 years. Congratulations, by the way, that's an awesome achievement. Uh, you have a fantastic family life. Um, you have surrounded yourself with amazing people. You're making an impact in the lives of millions. You're chasing your dream. So how, how can people, first of all, go about creating that sort of holistic success in their life that way you have created in yours? And why is it important to have holistic success and not just success in one area of your life? Um, I think it's all a result. All those things you named are a result of my internal, internal success. You could say in... <sighs> When you start, I think the, the outer success is always, always a result of inner growth. Mm. In, you know, like in shining your light in every area of your life. In letting, you know, like in, in, in allowing yourself to shine. In allowing your awesomeness to, you know, like to believe in your own awesomeness. We are own we are all born with this light within us, which can be for someone who is an excellent cook. He puts, you know, like in the cooking and in finding so much joy in cooking, he, you know, like he radiates that he finds a partner 
who really, you know, like is attracted in the same, you know, like vibrational level because he radiates joy and they have a fam, you know, like it all follows from within you. It's not like your outer circumstances make you happy. No, it's you are happy first. Happy is a flat word here, but I, you know, like it starts within you. You radiate and you vibrate all the self-confidence. And now you will say, well, if you're not self-confident, um, how do you get self-confidence? It's recognizing your voices of self-doubt. Those are only voices. They are not real. They come up with me very often too. I have, you know, like a client saying me something or my husband telling me something. You know, like two things in a row. First, my client and my husband. And all of a sudden, I see it coming up, you know, like doubting myself. And I have learned to recognize those voices in also seeing, okay, this, the, the situation maybe you know, like I can improve myself, I can become better, but it doesn't help me to first, you know, like bash myself and then, you know, like, no, you know, like I have, I, I don't deserve that. I don't deserve the self-doubt. I don't deserve the self-loathing. So, you know, like for me, in, in that, that inner, you know, like that inner fire, or you could say that, that glowing or radiating and, and having, you know, like the voices of self-doubt muted has come by fully loving, appreciating and accepting myself for who I am. Awesome. And, and that's, that's how you achieve holistic success. Yes. Yes. Awesome. So what you're saying is that success is an inside job. Yes. Yes. Right. I love it. I absolutely love it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm. Um, and for people in the audience, hashtag quote of the day number two, outer success is a result of inner growth. How awesome was that? Okay. I thought that was a bombshell. I loved it. I wrote it down. Okay. Have you written it down? Because you should. Okay. Grab a piece of paper, grab a pen and write that down. That's a writer downer right there. Thank you for sharing that, Barbara. Uh, I mean, this has been an absolute phenomenal conversation. I'd love to carry on. Unfortunately, time restricts us. So before yes. we wrap up, how can people find out more about you? How can they reach out to you? Uh, they can reach out through my page, um, Barbara Vercruz. You will write it below the video? Yes, yes. I, I put all the links below in the description. Yes, yes. They, they just can, you know, like um, uh, the messages on my page, I see them daily. If they reach out, they can, you know, like reach out there if they want to work with me, if they want to know more about me, they can explore my Facebook page. I'm on Instagram to, um, you know, explore my videos and see if it can help them. Um, I think that's, that's the best, best way to connect with me. Beautiful. And is there anything we can help you with right now? Me? Help me with? Yeah. Oh, yes. Uh, spread, you know, like spreading kindness, you know, like that's for me the biggest gift. If you can, you know, like change the world just by being you, by being the kind you, one by one. <laughs> Oh, that's beautiful. I, I absolutely love it. That's fantastic. That's really great. Um, guys, there you have it. That our conversation with Barbara Vercruz. She is absolutely phenomenal. I learned so much from this conversation. I mean, how awesome was this? Um, I yes. hope you I hope you learned all those things too. But there, there's just so much we covered. Everything from how to overcome adversity and change into a positive situation to surrounding yourself with the right people to how you can actually take control, develop focus uh, and courage in order to make sure that you go and chase your dreams um, or to actually overcome any sort of negativity and how you can actually immerse yourself with positivity and change your internal environment. How you can go ahead and chase your dreams. And there were some really amazing quotes. I mean, they were like, full on writer downers. I actually took, wrote them straight down. Like I've got notes here. I've got a pale, 
page full of notes, right? So this is crazy. Um, but I'll highly encourage you guys to go ahead and reach out to Barbara. She's absolutely phenomenal. All the links will be below in the description. So make sure you go ahead and reach out to Barbara. Um, and again, guys, thank you so much for being here. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel. First of all, it helps us grow. But secondly, it also gets you an entry into the channel competition where every single month, at the start of the new month, um, I will announce a winner. Somebody who will win access to my new networking course where I have put together the networking strategies of, of how I found, connected, and built relationships with some of the most successful people in the world. And I'm sharing all of that with you. And uh, if you subscribe and leave a comment on any video, and as long as I get a notification that you've subscribed and you left a comment, you get entered into the competition uh, automatically. And uh, I will announce the winner on the 1st of October. And finally, we also have our 100th video coming up very soon. We're in the early 90s at the moment. So tell me, which guest you want me to bring back? Which guest do you want to see come back onto the channel? Which guest added the most value to you? And I'll do my best to make sure that I get them booked in advance because very likely they're going to be busy. <laughs> so let's get that done. Uh, and with that, guys, stay awesome, hustle hard. Barbara, thank you so much for being here. Really appreciate your time. Okay, All right. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Guys, catch you in the next one.